Hi Girl Scouts! My name's Molly. I'm the program director at Girl Scouts of Virginia Skyline and I'm in Roanoke, Virginia. Today we are going to be covering the Ambassador Survival Camper Badge, step number four, um, which is to learn a survival camping skill. And the one that I've chosen to work with you today on is how to make a one match fire. So um, learning how to build a fire and building one successfully is a really important Girl Scout skill but learning how to make a campfire with just one match um, and being very uh, confident in your fire building skills is great and super useful when you're survival camping. Um, so we're gonna be going over that today. Before we get started, I do wanna encourage you, if you are not a member of our council, to go ahead and join. We'd love to have you. If you are a member but you need to renew, please do that as well. Um, we are very excited to um, have you join our council if you are new. Um, so we're gonna get started in just a minute here. Before we do, I wanna talk about a few things. So when you're building fires, there's a lot of considerations um, to keep in mind. First and foremost is always gonna be safety. Um, so you'll see behind me back here, I've got a bucket. That's a water bucket. I always wanna make it, um, make a fire. I've gotta have a water bucket real close by. So fill that up first before you get started. I've also got um, basically a little shovel just in case I need to move coals around, um, just so I don't have to um, reach into the fire or anything like that. I've got a shovel to do that for me. Um, so those are two very important safety elements to keep in mind. You're always gonna wanna tie your hair back, make sure you don't have too loose of clothing. Um, you never wanna abandon your fire. So while you um, are building a fire and while it's burning, you never wanna walk away from it. So always have at least somebody else there. Um, just to watch over it. And you also never want to leave it like at the end of the night when you're going to bed. You always have to put it out fully um, before you can be done. And we'll talk about that a little later as well and what that looks like. Um, so we've got our fire pit. Um, you always want to make a fire in a like designated fire ring or a place that's already built and set up for fires. Um, and when you're survival camping, you we talked about this in step one, you wanna know where you are, know the regulations. Some places you can have fires in certain areas, some places you can't in other areas. Um, so just knowing where and when you can have a fire and what that looks like. Um, so obviously I'm in my backyard, so I've just got my own personal fire pit. And then the last thing, so um, to make a fire, you need basically three things. You need um, something to burn, which is gonna be our wood. You need air, you need circulation and air because fire can't happen without air circulation. And then you need a spark. So we have one match fire, that's our one spark. Um, so beyond that, we've got all of our wood right here. Um, and I'll go over the different types of wood and how you build your fire. And to be confident and to be successful making a one match fire, you wanna make sure you do it right from the start. Um, so you don't have to fix things later on. So um, I'm gonna go over some techniques and show you a few things in just a minute here. All right, so like I said, when we are building our fires, we're gonna want um, certain types of wood. Um, usually when you um, are planning to build a fire, you're gonna collect a whole bunch of stuff and um, build your fire off of that. So you wanna make sure you gather the right type of wood. So you always wanna make sure whatever you gather is dead, of course, so you want it to snap and not bend. Um, you want it to not be green on the inside, that's very important. And then you wanna, basically the way I like to do it is I like to separate it into three different categories. Um, so you've got three categories of wood based on the size of it. And so from here, you can see we have a variety. I've got some bigger stuff, some real big stuff, some little bitties. And um, the three categories that you have are tender, kindling, and fuel. And so you wanna make sure you have enough of each and the right proportions. So we'll start with tender. Tender is our itty bitty stuff. And when I say itty bitty, I don't mean short. You know, it's not from um, one end to the other. It's gonna be how thick it is, how, what the diameter is. And so as you can tell, this is super skinny. I like to make sure it's skinnier than my pinky. That's a really good um, way to measure it from the get-go. Um, and you wanna make sure you have a lot, a lot of tender. When you're making a one match fire in particular, it's really important to have tons of tender, a lot of kindling, which is our next size up, and then some fuel. Um, so again, tender is the really, really little stuff. 
So I'm going to start a pile of just my kindling, or just, sorry, just my tinder. And then my kindling is going to be a little bigger. So it's going to be like, you know, sticks, things that maybe are about the size of my thumb-ish. Um, again, it's not about how long it is. It's going to be about how thick it is. So um, you don't want it bigger than your thumb. That's going to be um, not considered kindling. So you want some of this, this like mid-sized stuff is really important to keep your fire going. The tinder is what catches fire and starts your fire really easily, but the kindling really gets it going and helps catch the bigger pieces um, later on. And so those bigger pieces are called fuel. So I've got some of it right here. Obviously this is covered in a like a loose dead bark, so that'll probably work really well as a tinder substitute, not because it's a stick, but because it's really light and it burns really easily. And then everyone's familiar with just like standard firewood that you may find, um, you know, when you buy firewood. If you're out survival camping, you're not likely to run into anything like this, but you may find some really big, chunky um, logs that you can use that are really good fuel. And that's what keeps your fire going for a really long time. And when these break down, when you burn them, it makes really uh, good coals, hot coals that can be really good for, not just for warmth, and um, but they're good for cooking because they get really hot and it's basically like, that's what charcoal is essentially. So when you cook with charcoal, it's very similar to when you cook um, on just coals from a fire. And so the littler stuff burns nice and bright. So that's good for light if you need that, but fuel is really good for making coals. And so I always like to start, there's a handful of different um, styles of fire you can make. So we're gonna go over those in just a minute here um, and I'll show you what those look like and how you make them. And then I'm gonna show you, um, and we're gonna make our own one match fire. Okay, so the first example I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna build um, what's called a log cabin style fire. And it's very well named because it looks very similar to the way a log cabin looks. So you've got four sides. And hopefully you can see that all right. So I'm gonna start with two big logs um, parallel to each other. And then I'm gonna set two more parallel to them, but perpendicular to the first two. Um, so obviously it makes a very log cabin-ish shape. Um, and as you can tell, the air circulation comes from the bottom, so it's able to get in there really quickly. If I was gonna use this style to make a one match fire, what I would probably start doing is I would um, make the base right here with my four logs. And then from there, I would gather a variety of tinder and kindling and pile it um, along the sides here. So I'd probably start with a few pieces of kindling. And you wanna make sure they're long enough to go across. And you wanna make sure there's everything spread out enough to get airflow. You don't wanna crowd stuff in too much because then your fire is not gonna be able to breathe, which is really important to a successful one match fire. And so from there, I would gather just a ton of tinder. So it might take me a second to show you, but basically the way I would do it, So I would make a big pile and basically um, you can call this a tender bundle because it's just a big bundle of tender. Um, and you can lay that across. And so I've got a lot of tender to work with, which is great. I wanna make sure I start with a lot of that. I don't wanna use all of it right at the beginning because sometimes it's nice to have a little backup. Um, but then once I've got a nice bed of tender, I can also lay a few more pieces of kindling across it and around it. And basically I'm just making a lot, a lot of stuff in here to burn really quickly. So as you can tell, compared to my four pieces of fuel, all the stuff in the middle here is pretty small to start. Even for the kindling, it's not that big. I'm not using anything like super chunky yet. Um, because I want to start and make sure that it lights really quickly and easily. I want to set myself up for success. 
And so if I were to light this, before I would start, I would make another pile of stuff this size just to hold off to the side before I got started so that when this got um, ready to go and started to catch, I could just throw that on, keep it going, and then keep adding on slightly bigger and bigger and bigger things. And so again, the airflow is coming from the bottom. That's where I would light it. So if I was going to do this one, I'm not going to, I'm going to light a different one. If I was going to, I would take my match from the bottom, hold it until this stuff right here caught, and then it would spread nice and slow. Um, so this is a um, log cabin fire. This is a really popular style of fire. One thing that's great about it is if you're cooking over the fire, not only do you have four big pieces of fuel that could um, break down into really, really good hot coals for you to cook on, but it can also be, you can see that it's already like a square shape if you need to set a pot on your fire or you want to cook onto a burning fire as opposed to just cooking onto coals. So this is a really good shape of fire for that because it can keep whatever your cooking method is, you can keep it nice and steady. Um, some of the other methods I'll show you in just a minute here don't do that quite as well. And so it's important to think about what you're cooking and what kind of fire you want as well. Um, so that's a good start. The log cabin fire. I'm going to go ahead and take my materials off and show you the next style of fire. So take my fuel and our next style. I might start with one of these pieces of fuel. This one is called um, a cone fire because it makes a nice cone shape and actually, oh, here we go. So I've got these two pieces. Basically you want to set it up so that it makes, hmm, I'm gonna have to hold off on this actually. This one can be a little tricky to get started, um, but it's a very popular, especially for like campfires. If you have a stick um, that's got a Y shape in it, that can be really helpful. Okay, I found one that's got a good, it can hold your fire up or your your structure basically it can hold it in place as you're getting things set so so just to get started let's actually do this and then that i think that'll hold better nice and these pieces might be a little big to start with actually i don't know if i would use this big all the time but I do know that this wood that I'm working with right now is extremely dry because it's just been at my house um, and I know that it would catch really easily so those are other things you want to keep in mind when you're building your fire if you've got slightly wet wood you may want to start even smaller and this is just not wanting to stay together for me so bear with me seems a little sturdier. All right. So from here, what I would do is I would have, and actually, since I just made it, I actually already have basically a little tinder bundle. What I would do is I would take another stick underneath it to prop this up as well. And it doesn't have to be like up in the air, but again, you want a little bit of airflow. So it's good to have just a bit. And then from there, I'm going to pile even more sticks all around it. Again, you don't want to clog it too much. So you will learn a lot the more fires you make and the more you build. Um, a lot of times when people start out learning how to build fires, they just want to pile all the stuff they've got on the fire because they're like, you know, thinking that that is more to burn, the more the merrier, right? Um, but airflow is super, super crucial to a successful fire. And so I do have a mix of um, bigger and smaller stuff here. You want to make sure you have a good amount of everything. Um, but most important, again, is always going to be at the beginning your tender, especially when it's a one match fire because you've got one shot, right? So if I was going to light this, I would light it from right over here where there's a good bit of airflow. I can get my match in there and I can, I usually try to light a few places if I can. Um, and then from there, again, I'm gonna have a pile of tinder and kindling waiting for me so I can add on slowly. 
And then as it looks like it's spreading, it's getting bigger, I'm gonna add on bigger and bigger stuff. So um, more kindling size stuff, but then eventually bigger and you know chunkier things that I can like slide in there. And then eventually this whole cone shape is gonna be uh, caught on fire, all of it's gonna be burning, and I'm just gonna be able to add nice big stuff right on top of it. Um, and you could add three logs basically in the same shape of this, and then you've got a nice good uh, fuel source for a good long lasting fire. So what these fires I think are best for is for a lot of light because they usually burn really bright. They go up in the air. If you have a classic bonfire shape in mind, it's always like this. Um, you do want to make sure with these that they don't get too tall, too big, too out of control because that could be very dangerous. Um, and remember safety is always number one. Um, but they are good to cook on if you've got maybe a pot above because they can have a lot of heat coming up. They're obviously not going to be as sturdy structure wise if you wanted to set a pot on your cook fire. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but they're also, they're nice and warm. They eventually do create a nice bed of coals right at the bottom, um, which is always good for cooking. So that is the cone fire. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and I'm going to show you um, the type of fire I basically always start with because it's my go-to and it I always have good success with it and I just I enjoy it I like making um, this kind of fire and the more fires you make the more you'll probably figure out that you have a type of fire that you like to make as well so this is called a lean-to um, so you start with one log and I always set it up so I've got um, a tall side facing up and then from there, I usually set out a handful of kind of bigger kindling. Let's see if I can break this one. There we go. Kind of like a set of three slightly bigger kindling. I don't want anything super big, but I kind of want to make this the base of my structure. And then I'm gonna take that big bundle of kindling and lay it on top or sorry, big pile of tinder and lay it on top. And because I am gonna light this one, I'm gonna go ahead and make some backup piles for myself so I can make sure to keep this fire going. Um, I've got a few over here and a few over here, so bear with me. I always like, before I even think about starting to light a fire, I like to collect as much firewood as I possibly can. Because I always might want more later, but I want to make sure that I don't have to run away while my fire is still trying to grow because A, I don't want to abandon my fire, but B, I don't want it to go out while I'm trying to get more firewood, right? It's good to keep an eye on your fire and have all the wood you need right from the beginning. So I'm actually gonna throw a handful more of these on just to start. And then I've actually got a chunk of this bark from that log I showed you came off. So I'm gonna keep that handy because bark like that can burn really, really well. I don't like, um, and sometimes it's not safe to burn dry leaves. One, because they don't actually burn as well as you think that they would. They tend to burn really fast and then they disappear. Um, and then they can also, they're so light that sometimes they catch on fire and then they fly up in the air and then they're burning out in the air and that's not great. Um, so I like to, to avoid using leaves when I can. Um, and if I do, I just like to be really smart about it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. All right, I've got a good second pile here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and um, light my one match fire. So let me make sure we're in a good spot to see. All right, and I'm going to move stuff a little bit closer together. I've got a good amount of airflow, but I want to make sure I've got enough um, stuff close enough that it's going to catch. There we go. That looks good. And then since I've got, um, since I've got a good spot right here. That's where I'm going to light my fire. And so I'm going to take my one match and it's a little windy. So I'm going to try not to let it get blown out by the wind. 
And like I said, I'm just gonna take it down below. I like to light nice and low on things because fire goes up, right? The flames move up on their own. So if I start down below, then hopefully I can get it going up above. And I like to use the match as long as I can. Catch something without burning myself, obviously. And again, it's kind of windy, but it did, did catch a couple pieces of my tinder. And then from here, I may have lit my one match fire, but if I abandoned it right now, right, it's just going to go out. So it's very important to keep an eye on it, monitor it, and make adjustments. So I'm going to make sure I've got good little pieces to catch. Um, the fire burns up, like I said, so I want to make sure that I've got good stuff above the flames that can catch, otherwise it's just going to go out. So sometimes I'll catch a piece like this that's super dry and use that to keep the fire going down below, if I can. Usually you can catch enough stuff to get started, even if it does take a good bit of monitoring. And then eventually I'll get to a point where I feel pretty confident that the stuff that's in here is going to catch. Um, and that's what I've got my backups for. So whenever I feel good about where everything is and that stuff's burning well, I'll slowly want to add more tinder to that pile. And it's a learning process. So practice makes perfect, just like, just like with everything else. I always recommend, um, especially if you have a fire pit like this in your yard, make a backyard fire every now and then. Practice those skills. And then once you've got, this one's doing pretty well so far, but it's a little moved out from my lean-to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scooch my bigger log, if, if I can, nice and gentle. I don't wanna adjust things too much. And then I might even throw some of this bark on there because it's gonna burn pretty nicely. And then slowly I'm gonna add even bigger pieces. So I'm not throwing anything, you know, like real big on just yet. I want to make sure that I've got a small enough stuff that there can still be a good amount of airflow. Because if I lay a big log on this right now, it's not not likely to catch on fire, and the air airflow is not good to keep it going. So I've got a couple bigger pieces now. I'm going to start laying some small ones back on again. Like I said, just keeping an eye on things, monitoring it, and you'll see that there's lots of little sticks on the sides that burn burn up but don't burn all the way through so they stop stop burning but then you can throw them back on and get the rest of them burned keep that going and that's that so making a one match fire is not as difficult as it might seem at first again it takes a lot of practice and you have to be very confident in your skills it can be frustrating when you're learning to try and build a one match fire because you maybe the wind blows out your very first time you strike your match and that's just annoying. Um, but the more practice you get, the better you'll get at it. And now if you can tell some of these larger pieces have caught and are burning really well, it's crackling, it sounds great. I'm gonna start laying e even more big pieces on I've still got a ton of my little stuff over here, a lot of tinder. Um, so if I need it, maybe the fire starts dying down or something, I've got it if I need it. But now is the time that I'm gonna start building my fire and helping it grow. And so I'm gonna slowly catch these up. And the reason I like the lean-to, this uh, style of fire is because you can basically transform it into any style you want once you get it going. So I've basically got one side of a log cabin 
If I felt like throwing another one on right over here and then throwing two more on, that could work. I can also make a cone fire and build it up around this if I want. I find it a really good base um, for a lot of different types of fire. And so as you can tell, it's going pretty well right now. My fire's doing great. I can throw a bunch more on. I really could go ahead and throw on and actually I might as well. I'm gonna throw on another piece of fuel and I'm gonna move my camera away because it's getting a little hot. Um, but this is the way to start a good fire that I have found. I love the lean-to, it's really reliable. Um, less frustrating for me than the cone fire, which can be, can fall over and sometimes log cabin, you don't have enough fuel. So I hope you enjoyed learning this. Um, the secrets to a one match fire are really just practice makes perfect and a lot of tinder and a lot of kindling really go a long way. Um, so once you get enough practice, I recommend too practicing maybe after it rains. Go out and um, go out in your yard after a rainy day. Try to collect as much wood as you can, even with a lot of tinder and kindling. If it's a little wet, if you have enough of it, you can still start a really solid fire. Um, so practicing that skill is also really, really important. There's no one trick to it, but um, if you've practiced and you know you can start a fire in the rain, it's um, the confidence you'll have for your survival camping trip are huge. So get out there, build some fires, and have a great day. Thanks for joining. Okay. All right, so one last thing I wanted to show you is how to safely put your fire out because that is the most important part. Um, and so usually I would recommend that you wait until your fire's like all burned down until it's all like soft ash like that. Obviously I've still got some logs here, um, but that's not always possible. Say you have to go to bed, you're about to fall asleep and you don't wanna leave your fire burning, right? Sometimes you do have to separate it um, even when it's still a little bit like this. So the way that I would recommend doing that is first you're gonna to wanna to take a bigger stick, um, nice and long, and you're gonna to wanna to just basically separate all the burning pieces. And if it's dark out, you'll be able to see what's hot by the glowing embers. It's kinda of hard to see when it's light out like this. Um, but you basically start, I would start by spreading everything around as much as possible. And if there's old, like cold um, ash around your fire pit, you can kind of mix stuff up in that. If you have sand handy, which I don't right now, you can sprinkle sand. That's a good way to put, put your fire out um, pretty well. And then of course you've got your water bucket because we have that for safety. But you wanna make sure never to take it and just dump it on the fire because that will release a lot of steam. Um, it's really, a bad idea so definitely don't do that but use it sparingly sprinkle water take small handfuls and just sprinkle it you can hear it sizzling you can tell that it's still hot because it's making those noises especially the logs some of the stuff in the middle is still a little bit hot so you want to make sure that you sprinkle it on that as well um, Again, don't dump, don't dump the water. It's gonna be a bad idea. But sprinkle it. And then I like to occasionally stir it up some more because sometimes you'll have hot, hot stuff buried underneath all that. Sometimes you wanna get the other side of the logs. If it's all white like that, that means it's probably still kind of hot. So that's where I like to aim for. Again, if it's night, you'll be able to see the glowing embers so you'll know what's hot and what's not and then just sprinkle it around. Once you stop hearing those sizzling noises, that's usually a good sign that you're about done. But again, mix it up a few times, make sure you got everything. Even if a fire looks like it's out, if it's still hot, that means it can um, reignite. And it's really dangerous. It's a really good way to start a fire you don't want. I still have some heat over here. I'm going to sprinkle. And then slowly but surely, it's going to be out. Again, if you let your fire burn down 
really well, like I would recommend. It's, it's not going to take a lot to get it out. When you've got logs like this still, still hot, sometimes it takes a little while longer. And so you just want to make sure you get everything. And so far this looks pretty good and out. I'm still steaming on the logs a little bit, so I'm going to make sure I get all those hot spots. But the good test is if it's hot, but it's not burning. Like it'll still be a little warm, but if it's enough that you can put your hand here and not be like, ow, ow, that's a good way to know you're basically done. And yeah, these logs are still a little steamy, so I'm going to add some more water, but that is essentially how you want to put your fire out. And you never, like I said, never want to walk away from a fire while it's still burning. So you always want to make sure it's fully, fully out. So thanks again for joining. I hope you learned something.